Hello everybody. Welcome to our webinar this afternoon or this evening or morning wherever you are in the world today. We're excited to have a good friend of ours in the room with us presenting. His name is Avramis Despatis and he is a great partner of ours over there in Greece in that part of the world. Uh, he really really knows his stuff. We've known him for a very long time and so we're excited to have you um, have this opportunity for you to learn from him. There will be some opportunities to answer and ask questions at the end of the presentation as well. Okay. Well, thank you with that, and I'm going to turn it right over now to Avramus to uh, begin the presentation. It's all yours. All right. Thank you very much, Dave. So, hi, everyone. My name is Avramis, and let me very quickly tell a few things about myself. I'm sure that you you have read my CV, but basically I am a certified technical analyst from the International Federation of Technical Analysts, and this is actually what gives me the right to be here and talk to you about technical analysis, and of course I trade my own and my company's money, and I'm also a portfolio manager in another company here in our part of the world. So, as Dave has said, uh, we'll do the presentation to start with. If you have any questions, please take a note and uh, we will answer them during the last 10-15 minutes of the session. And uh, today we are here to talk about identifying trends, yes? You know, uh, trends is the most basic thing you have uh, in the beautiful world of technical analysis and trading using technical analysis but it's so many times overlooked by so many people by focusing on using oscillators and indicators and uh, all those other nice tools that can help us uh, with this quest so without delaying you anymore let me start by what we are going to cover today. So we are going to talk about the definition of a trend, of course, so those of you that uh, I'm sure a lot of you already know it, but please be patient with me, and I promise I will show you something towards the end that you are going to like. So we are going to talk about uh, a reversal pattern called the failure swing. Then we are going to use these as entry signals, add to that our exit signals, and put it all together in a nice little system that I like to call the trend reversal entry. So, before we start, uh, in all my courses I always like to start them uh, like this. I want everyone to understand that in this game that we are, a wonderful game of trading, uh, most successful traders agree that to make money out of this game you need three things. You need a method, which is a working system. Now, the method can be anything. Yes, it can be fundamentals, it can be technical analysis, uh, it can be gut feeling, or, or whatever, yes? But the important thing is that you have a method. For me, I have found that technical analysis, and what I'm going to show you today, is one of the best methods to use. But on its own, it's not enough because your method cannot be 100% accurate, right? So, on that method, you have to also add some money management practices. So, as I'm sure you know, is how much money I'm going to invest every time I press the button, right? And the use of stop losses and all those other things, yes? All right? So, just some sound issues that uh, we are sorting out. So, and the third thing that uh, we need is a proper mental approach. What does that mean? Basically, it means that you need to have the discipline to follow your method and stick to your money management, right? So, if you can do that, then you have a complete method and way of trading the markets. And for those of you that read uh, Alexander Elder's books, you will find it as the three M's, yes? So method, money, and mind is the three ingredients for success 
in this game, yes? So today we'll be focusing on a method and we will touch on the money management that goes with it. About the mind, there's not much I can do. I have to put my white robe on and we talk for a lot of hours, so we'll skip that for today, okay? So, what is technical analysis? And this is, of course, for those of you that are beginners in this thing. So, I'm going to very quickly go through it and then we'll advance uh, quite rapidly as we move along. So now, the definition of technical analysis in the books is that it is the study of market action, mainly through the use of charts, for the purpose of predicting future price trends. So let's take an example to better understand what we mean by market action. So let's say that this share or this currency or this index does not matter what it is. We have its first trading price, which is the open of the day, yes? Then during the day, uh, price moves up to 110, let's say, which is the high of the day, to then come down to 103, which is the low of the day, to finally close at 105, which is the closing price of the day, yes? This is market action. However, because it's difficult to see it in this form, uh, what we have done is we are using a method used uh, in Japan in the 16th century and Nielsen brought to us in the 90s, which is called, as I'm sure you know, candlesticks. So how do we create a candlestick? Is we take the open of the day, let's say, and the close of the day, and we draw a box. This rectangle is called the body of the candle. And I'm sure you've seen some shadows, or wicks as they are called, which are basically some vertical lines from the body to the high and from the body to the low. And these we call shadows or the wicks. Okay? So, you know, with uh, Metastock you can uh, you can use any color you want to show the candles, but for today, just to have a common language, we are going to use a white candle to signify that the open of the day was lower than the close of the day. And we will use a black candle, and of course this is a bullish candle, right? And we will use a black candle to identify the time when the open was higher than the close, and of course, we will call this a bearish candle, okay? So you know why they are called bulls and bears, right? It's from the way the animal attacks, the bull attacks with the horns pushing up, thus bullish market means the prices are going up, and the bear attacks from up to down, pushing prices down. This is why we consider a black candle bearish as the market is going down. So if you're having difficulty separating the colors, think about it like this. If you buy at the open and you sell at the close and you make money, it was a white day. If you buy at the open and you sell at the close and you lose money, it was a black day. All right? Okay, very good. So why I mentioned this is because I want to make sure that we are all on the same page and that we are going to use this information of candles, yes, to identify the trend of the market. Now, what is the trend? The trend, as Dow, who is the father of technical analysis, said, is simply the general direction of the market, right? But as I'm sure you all know, the market does not go in a straight line, but rather moves in zigzags. It is the direction of these zigzags, these peaks and troughs that constitute a market trend, right? So a peak is a top, a trough is a bottom, but this is the nomenclature in technical analysis, yes? Thus, we identify an uptrend as a series of successively higher peaks and troughs. A downtrend is just the opposite, a series of declining peaks and troughs. And 
we identify a sideways or a range market when we have horizontal peaks and troughs. So let's look at this visually and then we'll go and look at some examples in the market to become more clear. Okay, so how do we define an uptrend? And now look at this. I'm sure you've read a lot of books. I'm sure you have seen the definition of the trend. What you have not seen, or at least I have not seen in any book, is how to help you identify the correct tops and bottoms in the market, right? So this is what I'm going to try and add to your existing knowledge of tops and bottoms today. So look at this. These are white candles going up, tra la la tra la lo, everyone is happy, everyone is making money. And then we have two black candles going in the opposite direction, right? After we see these two black candles, then we can go back and we can mark the top, the peak here. Is it clear? We cannot say it's a top or a peak until we see at least two black candles going down. And now I'm going to give you a rule. Now, the rule goes like this. I need to see a minimum of two black candles to say that I have a top. And not just that, the two candles that you have to see, they have to have a big body. What does that mean? They shouldn't be small candles, yes? They should have a relatively big body. How do we say what is a big body, you are going to tell me? Well, you can go and look at the last 25, 30 candles and see their size. And then you ignore the ones that are small. Thus, you want two big black candles and you want them to have a lower high and a lower low. What does that mean? It means that the high of the second black candle should be lower than the high of the first black candle. And the low of the second black candle has to be lower than the low of the first black candle. And then you can say that you have a peak. Not before. Now, of course, after we have two white candles going up, like so here, we have a bottom or a trough. So again, let me repeat the rule. So the rule is like this. I need to see at least two white candles that they have their body size has to be big relative to the last 25, 30 candles and the high meaning the shadow high, yes? The high of the second white candle must be higher than the high of the first white candle. And the low, the shadow low of the second white candle has to be higher than the low of the first white candle. If you have this condition, then you can go back and mark this as a bottom. And then the market goes up, tra la la tra la la. And we come down again. Now, look at this here. Do you see this black candle here? We have one black candle. This does not make a top or a bottom because we said that the minimum requirement to identify a top or a bottom is two, at least two black to identify a peak, white to identify a trough, right? But afterwards at the top here, at the peak, you see we have two big black candles with lower high and lower low, thus creating our peak. And then the market goes down, creating our second bottom. And then the theory goes like this. From the moment you have two peaks consecutively higher than each other and two troughs consecutively higher than each other, then from the moment you go above peak two, we have what we call an uptrend, yes? And from the moment you identify that you have an uptrend, do you know what this uptrend is going to do? Well, it's going to continue going up, and do you know for how long? Forever. 
<laughs> no, I'm joking. I just want you to have in your mind that from the moment we identify an uptrend, the most probable thing to happen is for this uptrend to continue going up. Yes? Okay? All right, so I see a question from Paddy there that I'm going to answer because it's a very good question, but please don't bombard me with questions now. What we are discussing now has nothing to do with time frames, yes? Okay? And just to, since it was brought up in this part, let's clarify what we mean by time frames for those that might not be familiar with it, yes? Okay, so here we have the S&P index, okay, which we can use for our examples today. And look at this. I can come here and I can make this, as you see here, says D for daily, right? This means that each candle here is the open of the day, the close of the day, and the high and the low reached during the day. Now, if I make this a weekly chart, then it means that each candle is the open of the week, the close of the week, and the highest and the lowest point reached during the week. And accordingly, if I make it a one hour chart, each candle is the open of the hour, say at 10 o'clock, the close at 11, and the highest and the lowest point reached between 10 and 11, okay? So it does not matter for the identification of trends and what we are talking about now, it does not matter what time frame you are looking at, okay? So if you are looking at a weekly chart, then you try and find two big black candles and two big white candles on the weekly chart. If you are looking at a five minute chart, you do the same for the five minute chart. Okay, so let's now go back and continue with the definition of a downtrend, which is of course the opposite. So how do we define a downtrend? Again, we are going down, tra la la tra la la, all those that are short are happy and making money. And as we are going down with black candles, then we see two white candles. Let me again remind the rules. They are two white candles with a big body and the high of the second white is higher than the high of the first white and the low of the set of the second white is higher than the low of the first white yes and then you can come and find the lowest point and this is your bottom and by lowest point we mean the shadow low then it goes up and comes down with two big black candles with the high of the second one lower than the high of the first one and the low of the second one lower than the low of the previous one and once you have these conditions then you go back and the highest point reached after the bottom is your top and so on yes and then once you have two peaks lower than each other and two troughs lower than each other, then from the moment we go below trough two, we have a downtrend. And what's a downtrend going to do, we said? It's going to continue going down forever, right? Well, or at least the most probable thing to happen is for this downtrend to continue. Uh, you will understand in a minute why I say uh, forever. Okay, now let's look at the third phase, let's say, that a market can be. And this is a range or sideways market. So again, the first thing you do is find the peaks and the troughs on your chart, right? And then you look at them and you see that the peaks and the troughs, they are more or less at the same level. Now remember, it's not going to be brain surgery. It's not going to be exactly 111, 111, 111, 111. Yes, it's around the area there. So if we have horizontal peaks and troughs, then we identify this trend as a range or a sideways trend. And what do we do in this case is the question. So look at this. The reason I'm 
saying forever is because I want you to have clear in your mind that there are three decisions confronting the trader, yes? They are to go long, go short, or do nothing. So you, from the moment you have an uptrend, the only thing you are allowed to do is to go long. You are not allowed to go short from the moment we have identified an uptrend. And the only thing you are allowed to do if you have a downtrend is to go short. Why is that? Because the probability of the downtrend continuing, yes, are higher than the downtrend reversing. And what do you do when you have a range? In a range, we do nothing, which is, of course, the most difficult thing to do, right? But in a range, you should do nothing. Right? Is it clear? These are the three states that the market can be in. So let's look at an example or two. So let's open here. And what do we have here with it? Let's go for the S&P again. Okay. And what do we have? Oh my God. Three lenses. Yes. Okay. So let's make it easier and just look at this part. Now from now, I will tell you later what to look at on a chart. But for now, the only thing I care at this point in time is for you to see what I'm showing you and identify the tops and the bottoms, right? Okay? Now, so we start from the low, which is the low here, and we go up, right? And then, what do we have here? We have, is this a top? Definitely this here would be a top, right? And then once we come down here and we go up again, then we have created our first trough. Then it came all the way up here. And here we have created our second peak. And then the market came all the way down here, which created our second trough. So what do we say? We say that from the moment the price goes above this peak here, the second peak, which was uh, 1, 4, 2, 5 more or less, yes, we can always see the exact level, we have an uptrend. So what is the most probable thing to happen for this uptrend to continue going up? And as long as we continue to have higher peaks and higher troughs, then this uptrend is expected to continue going up forever. Or at least it's more probable to do it, yes? So we are going up. So this is a beautiful uptrend on the S&P. So if it comes down, what is the most probable thing to happen? It's a correction for the trend to continue going up and so on. So we will continue with this following the trend, buying the dips until we see something that is going to tell us that this uptrend is changing. And this is where we are going to go now and have a look at what we call reversal patterns or the failure swing as John Murphy called it in his book. So as we say here, tra la la tra la la, peaks and troughs, we continue going up. Okay, so what is the, what do we expect the market to do here? What is the most probable thing to happen here is for the market to continue going up, right? And look at this, what happens here. Here is the first time in all this uptrend that the market fails to do what? It fails to go higher, meaning it has created a top lower than the previous top, yes? So we failed to break 
the resistance. We have a top that is lower than the previous top. This tells us that this uptrend is not as good as it was before because we no longer have higher tops. So this semi destroys the uptrend. When is the uptrend going to be completely destroyed? When we stop having higher bottoms as well. Now, up to the time we are above the last bottom, we still have higher bottoms, but we don't have higher tops anymore. So this is our warning signal. But what will happen if we go below the last bottom, which we call the swing level? So once we go below the swing level, it means that the uptrend has been completely destroyed. And this is the pattern that we call the failure swing. And the moment if the price goes below the swing level, then you can go short. So pay attention to this. You don't wait for two peaks and two troughs to go long, yes? This is just the definition of an uptrend. The way we enter the market is after we have an uptrend, we wait until we see the reversal in the uptrend, in which case we will enter short because most probably this is going to be the beginning of a new downtrend. And then the market is going to go up again. And what is the most probable thing to happen? To continue going down, right? And we will continue shorting it until at some point, which definitely will happen. Yes, it's not going to be forever. We will see the failure to go lower, meaning we have a bottom higher than the previous bottom. That means that no longer do I have lower bottoms, which is part of the definition of a downtrend. So for a downtrend, we said I want lower bottoms and lower tops. Now what happened here? I no longer have lower bottoms. So the downtrend is semi-destroyed. When will it be completely destroyed? It will be completely destroyed the moment we go above the last top which is our swing level. So the moment we go above our swing level, then we have our entry signal to buy and go long in this market. All right, and this is our first way of entering the market. We buy when we see a failure swing for up, and we sell when we see a failure swing for down. So let's go to our Metastock and have a look at an example or two, yes? Okay, so we need to go a bit back in time. So the market was coming down, bottom top, bottom top, and I'm not going to draw them, yes? So it came all the way down here. Then the market went up here. And maybe this way will make it more fun. So it came all the way up to here. And what were we expecting it to do here? Since here we have a top. To continue coming down. Break this bottom. And continue lower. Instead, what did it do? Instead, it fails to go lower. And then we say from the moment the market goes above this top here, then we have our failure swing to go long, in which case there we buy because the most probable thing to happen is for the market to go into an uptrend. Yes, and now is this here, since we are talking about it, a top? Well, let's see if it fits our rules. Yes, so we have two black candles. Okay the body size relative to the previous ones is acceptable. It's not small like this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, or this one. Yes, so it's from the relatively big ones that we have. And the high of this one is lower than the high of the previous one. And the low of this one is lower than the low of the previous one. 
in which case we say that here we have a top and then we have our bottom and the market continues to go up and we have our bottom and we have our top and then here what do we have the market coming down the question is is this a bottom yes because we have one two big whites uh, fitting our rules and then we go up here and then the market comes down here and what did we have over here we had our failure swing to go short right so here we go short and then the market gives us a stop loss so what's the first rule we have to remember that we are not 100 percent correct yes but afterwards let's say you bought you didn't buy let's skip it for now so then the market came all the way up here and here what did we have we had our top here we have our bottom yes and if you are wondering why i'm saying that this is a bottom is because i ignore these two candles in the middle that don't fit my profile and i say okay but this is a big white this is a big white the high of this one is higher than the high of the previous one the low of this one is higher than the low of the previous one so yes i can say i have a bottom and thus here i have my swing formation and i say that from the moment the price goes below this level i'm going to go short and then the market went all the way down there we'll talk about exit signals uh, later on and then the market came all the way down here went up again came down failed to go lower and from the moment it swings and breaks this level here then we have our latest failure swing to go long and the market is still going up and this is in a nutshell uh, how we use the failure swing right now the, we'll see a few more examples later but for now let me continue and add a few more things to our puzzle so look at it you have to accept that in this business that we are in technicians we are trend followers we follow the trend yes so the only way for us to make money is to accept that we will never eat the head and the tail of the fish so what does that mean it means that we will never buy here we will never buy at the bottom yes and we will never sell at the top meaning going long and short opening a new position right why because we have to wait for the failure to go lower and then the swing so we don't eat the head of the fish and we will never short here why because we will wait for the failure to go higher and then we will short once we have the completion of our failure swing and thus we don't eat the tail we do it however the good part in the middle and now just to talk about time frames again uh, i want you to picture time frames like fish yes i don't know if you like fish but think of a big fish that they bring you on your table to eat yes a very big one it has a huge head a huge tail and a big body of course and what else it's very easy to take the bones out and eat the fillet these are the high time frames it's the weekly time frame it's the monthly time frame yes so the higher the time frame the less noise exists the less bones exist in the market and the easier it is to eat it as you go down the time frame say the daily okay you can still get rid of the bones 
but it's more difficult and you might choke a little. On the four hours, even more difficult to get rid of the bones. On the one hour, even more difficult, causing more risk of choking, right? So what I mean is that the lower you go down the time frames, the more difficult it becomes to identify trends, okay? This is why, for example, if you look here at the weekly, look how nice the trends are. Now, if we go to the hourly, okay, well, this is a nice and easy trend, okay? So, always taking it from the low that we have here, we have our top, our bottom, our second top, bottom, yes? And from the moment we go above the level here, we have an uptrend, and la 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 low, we are still in an uptrend, and so on, yes? But remember that the lower time frames, like a few weeks ago, you see how more difficult it is to identify the trends because the markets range, then they go up, then they come down, and, uh, and all those things. So this is how I recommend you enter the markets using the failure swing. And now look at this. Look at the power that Metastop is giving us, yes? Now what you can do is you can program, of course I'm sure you all know Metastop, so that it finds the tops and the bottoms for you with the logic that I just explained, yes? Or, for example, Barry, you write something about the zigzag there. The zigzag is not that good because, in essence, the only thing that the zigzag indicator is doing is basically using percentage corrections to say, I have a top or a bottom. However, the correct tops and bottoms are identified uh, as I explained to you, by the candle reversals, big candle, lower high, lower low, and so on. So, over here, I have created one such tool that you can create. And if we take, for example, this part, where you see we have an arrow up, what does the arrow up mean? It means that you have a bottom, yes? That means that the last point here is your bottom. And then when you have an orange arrow down, you have a top, meaning that the highest point here is your top. And you can find the tops and the bottoms in the market using a mechanical tool that, of course, it's not going to be 100%, it will miss some, okay? But in essence, it is finding for you the tops and the bottoms according to the definition that you gave it, yes? So you see, while here before when we were explaining, we said this is a bottom, this is a top, this is a bottom, this is a top, causing you to go short, in reality, if you use the correct definition, then you see that this was not a top and this was not a bottom, thus not causing you to go short in that instance over there. So, now look at this. Now that I have a tool that is finding the tops and bottoms on me, what can I do? I can create another tool related to this one that is using the tops and the bottoms to find the swings, right? So, on this side here, we have the tool that is finding for us the swings in the market. So look at this. Let's look at just these parts here. Now, remember, the one that I'm showing here, this means that I have a top, yes? I have a bottom, I have a top, right? And if you convert this, you have one, two, three, top, bottom, top. Once it breaks below the level, like it's showing here, then you have a failure swing to go short. So here, you would go short. And then, if we come to this part over here, you have your bottom, you have your top, you have your bottom, meaning that from the moment I go above this level here, I'm going to have my swing, yes? Thus, 
if you see the arrow here, this is doing exactly this, telling us in essence that you should be buying here because you have a bottom, a top, the failure to go lower, and here you have the swing. And here it was telling us that once we go below this level here, you go short because you have a failure swing to go down. And of course, the best failure swing we got was this one up here. You see, back in 2008, we were going up, tra la la tra la lo, bullish, everyone was happy. And then here, if we go back at the same time, you will see, you remember, you need three arrows on this guy here for the bottom and tops to create a failure swing or a swing. Uh, because they, this one cannot differentiate between them uh, on this guy. So here I have my top, my bottom, and my other top. And once I go below this level, I have my swing, yes? Okay? And this is what this signifies taking this swing over here. And then it came, became bearish, and it maintained the bearish stance until over here, in which time I had a swing going higher and thus finishing that downtrend, becoming bullish all the way, all the way up to here, or where I had my, so let me zoom this one up, where I had my swing for down, and then over here, I had my swing for up, and this is the last signal that we had on the S&P on the weekly time frame, is this swing to go higher, and we are still long and tra la la tra la la. Okay? Now, because we are running out of time, I think we'll, we'll leave the exit signals is another big story, but which we can cover uh, in a future seminar if you so want to uh, but for now i want you to i want you to show you something else that i like to use in metastock yes so after you have created the logic that i explained to you and you have made it uh, an expert advisor and a tool here you know one of the biggest problem that uh, most traders face is that for example uh, they trade only the s p yes Okay, so you wait and wait and wait for the signal, you don't get the signal, so what you do? You go to the hourly to get faster signals. Yes, again the same logic as you see works uh, relatively well on the one hour chart with our last signal to enter the market down here and going all the way up there. So we go long here, we go short here, and then we go long again. And we are still in because we are waiting to see a swing. And when are we going to see a swing? If the price goes higher, fails to go higher, and then swings down, thus telling us that we have a swing. Of course, this we have to wait a bit more for this to happen. Okay, so what you can do now, you have these tools, let's say, and uh, these are uh, relatively easy for anyone to, to create, is you can create an exploration and you tell the explorer, go and find for me all the shares, let's say, that are ready to give me a swing for down. So I have created one such exploration here, and we can scan the S&P 500, for example, on the daily time frame. I'm using a lot of records, and it's going to be a bit slower, so let me decrease it a little. And we can start the exploration. And then what this is going to do for us, it's going to go and find, if any, or all the shares that have a possible swing on the daily time frame. 
Now, I want you to say I'm emphasizing swing and not failure swing because a specific tool is, does not care that much if it has the failure to go higher and the swing. It only finds the instruments that have just a swing, yes? And then it's your job as a trader to open the chart, which we will if we find any, and analyze it properly and trade only the ones that I showed you that they have a failure and a swing, right? So again, what we are doing is we are filtering the, using these tools to find the best instruments for us to trade. And this is the beautiful thing. You don't have to trade only the euro, only the gold or whatever, yes? Okay? Which uh, gold was an amazing uh, swing actually on the... So we still have some shares, but I think it didn't find any yet, but we'll see there. So what uh, we can do, for example, if we go and we search for gold, and I'm sure that gold is very popular lately. Okay, and I think I, until that, if you go to the monthly time frame, which means that each candle is one month, okay? Then you see that <laughs> you had a failure swing to go long in 2002, and then just a couple of months ago over here, we had a failure swing to go short, yes? Okay? And so on. Now, I know we have, uh, have run out of time, more or less, uh, so I have to give you a Q&A session. Mm, so, before I do that, let me just tell you... Oh, here is the report, and you see we have found these 1, 2, 3, 4 shares from the 500 that they are trend reversal ready to go short. So, what we do now is we will open the charts of this one, of this one, of this one, and of this one. And we will, I don't know what I did there, and we will look at them to see if there is a good possibility for a failure swing. Yes? So you see, this is what I was meant telling before. This here is telling you that you just had yes, a swing. It's not a failure swing as the one we defined because the high here is higher than the previous one. Yes? So you see what it did? It made a new high from the previous high over there and then it broke the level here. This is what we call just a swing, yes? Some people trade it but it's better to wait for and actually trade the failure swing. So, okay, let other people make money on this share. We are not going to make money on this share. We are going to wait for this one. Why are we going to wait for this one? Because our exploration has told us that this share is trend reversal ready. What does that mean? It means that, and if you look at it, you will see that it went all the way up here. Then it came all the way down here. This is definitely a bottom. It went up here. And it fails to go higher. So the moment the price goes below this level here, the 45 and a half, we will have a failure swing on this southern share, whatever it is. I know the people that trade S&P probably know better. Okay? And there we have our entry signal to go short. So you can enter an order in the system. I want to short the moment it goes below the level there. And let's just add 
where we put the stop loss, the stop loss, you always place it above the failure level. All right? So the stop loss, because not all failure strings are correct, you have to put it where I just showed you, yes? So beginners look for promising trades and assume that if they find them, that will give them money. Professionals, on the other hand, spend a lot of their time looking for take profit levels and stop loss levels. So there's two kinds of exit signals, the stop loss signal and the take profit signal, yes? Take profit, uh, we will cover in a future seminar, but I want to leave you with the correct level to place the stop loss. So when you are going short on a failure swing, you short here and the stop loss is above the failure level. When you go long, you go long here and the stop loss is over here below the failure level. Right? Is it clear? So I would like to, I will stop here and finish the session at this point where you have your stop losses. So for the time being, you can enter the market with a swing, let's say, and exit the market with a swing. Okay? And you can see where you can take your profit later on uh, in the session. So thank you very much. This is what I wanted to say. Uh, let's go in the last 10 minutes we have uh, for any Q&A you might have. So this is a custom made indicator since I see there that we have the name, what the name of this indicator is. Okay, but it works on the logic that I just uh, explained to you, yes? So while we are waiting for any questions, let's see the other shares that we found uh, using our scan, yes? Again, over here, we see that we will have a beautiful failure swing once we go below this level here. Why? Because we have a top here, a bottom here, and now this is 1% away from this bottom here, telling us get ready to go short. So another possible trend reversal on the daily over here. And let's look at the other share we got. You see, this one, even though we got it on our exploration, is not as clear as the other two we saw, yes? Okay, so we skip this one and we just go and trade the ones that we have seen that they are clear. And this way you can scan any market in the world to find the good instruments to trade based on what we discussed now, yes? Now, I'm sure you see me focusing on the higher time frames and the reason is because they are much clearer, yes? It's not that we don't like to trade the lower time frames, okay? But to do that, you need more information and that's where the indicators and the oscillators come in to help us filtering the good and the bad swings, yes? So Jay, uh, no, uh, I, we don't wait for anything, yes? Uh, the moment, let's say, that we have our swing, so where did we have the swing on the daily time frame? We had it over here, up here, on the gold daily, yes? We go short, no, no questions asked, uh, nothing uh, waiting. The SO stock is at earnings report today. You know, uh, John, as technical analysts, we believe that 
price action, market action, discounts everything, which means that it takes into consideration the fundamentals. Why? Uh, because some people, well, you shouldn't say this like, because anyway, we believe that the price action reflects everything. So people who are close and know what is happening, uh, my duct first and we see this direction in our charts so TGD so let's have a look at uh, at that one uh, an easy way to find it is to go again to the report and you are talking about uh, this one yes open sorry open chart Again, as you see, this is not one of our preferred shares to trade because it does not have the failure and the swing. It only has the swing part in the picture, yes? But definitely the swing is an important thing and if you have a long position in this share, it's a very good idea to get out of it, earnings or not. All right, clear? All right, very good. So again, I want you to understand that the beautiful thing about having the ability that Menastock is giving you to scan all the markets, all the instruments in the world, to find the ones that fit your criteria, does not mean that there are not other criteria that are going to be correct or not, yes? But you have a system and you follow it. Remember, we said system and we have to follow it. So this gives you the freedom to scan all the shares in the world and find the ones that match your criteria and trade those. Right, very good. So to sum up, what you could do until we usually use Fibonacci for the exits, but what you could do is you could say, I will enter when I see a failure swing. Like for example, the entry we had was down here. And I would exit when I have either a failure or a just a swing, yes? So you would buy at 62 and sell at 69 on the last move up, yes? Okay? Now, as you see here, you would go short and long, maybe lose some money, long, short, maybe lose some money, then close it even. And this is where it's important to also have an understanding of the bigger picture of the higher time frame and to have another way to exit the markets and what we use to exit the markets uh, faster is we use Fibonacci projections and retracements that we you could put from the bottom to the top and you see here it tells us that this is a good level to take your profit but we leave this for next time all right great So Dave, I think my hour is up. Okay, well, and, and we've really appreciated it. Avramas, thank you so much for joining us for this hour. Do you have contact information you can put on the screen if anyone uh, would like to reach out to you and your organization? Yeah, sure, let me, let me go to the last page we have here. And if anyone wants to contact me, you can email us at info at fireacademy.com. And this is our website. And if you have any questions, uh, please feel free to send me an email. And I will do my best to reply as soon as possible. Fantastic. 
Thanks so much for joining us, everybody. Best of luck in all you do, and uh, thank you once again to Avramas for his presentation today. So, my pleasure. So, again, if anyone has any questions, please feel free to send it to me, and hopefully we will do the Fibonacci magic next time where we are going to put everything again together and complete the whole puzzle of entry, stop loss, and exit. So thank you very much again. Hope you enjoyed it. And hope we'll see you again soon.